Technology was supposed to make our lives easier. Apps and platforms to help you with every single thing. Hell, we even have AI at ChatGPT now. But for most people, it's almost like technology is not working for you, but against you. A constant bombardment of notifications and distractions, a crap ton of devices that make you travel with enough charging cables to climb the K2, and a relationship with social media that starts with enabling all possible restrictions and digital well-being options, only to end up at 3 a.m. with all of them disabled, scrolling obscure memes on Instagram. If you get your digital life in order, it can actually give you superpowers. And I'm not just talking about productivity and checking off a thousand to-dos per day. So here are 10 very practical things that helped me un my digital life. And number seven is just for the bravest ones of you. But the first one is a game changer for your daily sanity, which is hardcore social media control. Social media <laughs> is a great asset. A lot of people try to deny it, but in the end, it's a way to stay connected to your friends, learn about new topics, so it has a positive impact, but of course, it can be very easy to get sucked into the doom scrolling. So the first instinct that everybody has is just, hey, let's have some limitations on it, let's enable my digital well-being on my phone. But in many cases, that simply doesn't work. It's too easy to go around these limitations. You're queuing at the bank, you're on your phone, you're bored, and you just remove the limitations and then start playing with the apps and you're back to square one. So what you should do is go into hardcore mode. For me, for example, I found two main ways. The first one is this thing right here. This was sent to me by a company called Unplug. I'll leave them in the description. They are not sponsored at all, but this is a very cool gadget. It's basically an NFC tag. And basically you can set some apps to be unlocked only when you tap this thing to the back of your phone. So if you leave this, say, in your keychain, then you need to physically get your keychain, tap your phone with the keychain, and then you get access to the apps. But if you're an Android, you also have another option, which is modded applications. I have an Instagram app, which is the main social media that I tend to use, that has a modded version that removes the feed, removes the stories, and basically gives you bare bones just DMs and seeing profiles of people. So when I meet someone, I want to exchange Instagram details, I can do that. If I get a DM, I can see it and respond, but I cannot get stuck into doom scrolling because there's nothing to scroll, there's no feed. Now, this can be hacky and you need to be careful about what you are actually downloading, but it's definitely an option for Android users. Or for example, you can use web versions. You can just remove the app from your phone and when you need to access, say, a specific video, you can just go on the website of TikTok or Instagram and watch it from there. The experience is gonna be really bad, but that's kind of the point. It's less addicting and it leads you to use it way less. And we can move on to the next one, which is going on a notification witch hunt. Because all the notifications that you get on your phone on a daily basis, and most people get 60 plus notifications every single day, well, 80% of them, you'll find that they are just completely useless. So just try this. For a week, anytime you get a notification from an app, think about it one second. Don't open it and just think, what am I getting from opening this notification and seeing it? Could I open this app on my own in 10 minutes or an hour? If the answer is yes, then just remove the notifications from that app altogether. And with this notification witch hunt, just be ruthless. It's always better to skin the notifications down too much and then eventually re-enable some of them than be left with tens of notifications every day that just distract you from your life. Next up is a very interesting one because it's questioning your default. Every year, Google pays $20 billion to Apple to be the default search engine. So why is that? Well, because people just trust the default option. But what you need to do is for the apps that you use the most, which for most people is gonna be your email client, your browser. Take some time and investigate what alternatives there are out there. And if you spend 10, 20, 30 hours, or even 50 hours a week on one of these pieces of software, you wanna make sure that it's the best one for the job. For example, I've been a Chrome and sporadically Firefox user for 10 years now, and I never really questioned it. Chrome is what everybody's using, so I'll just roll with it. But then when I took some time to evaluate some options and try something different, I found Arc Browser, which is an incredible alternative. It's based on Chromium, so all the pages look the same, you have all the extensions. And so questioning my default and choosing a different software that was better for the job made my daily work life just so much better. The next one is a very hot topic because it's USB-C all the things. Listen, since last year I was just like you. I had a laptop charger and a phone charger and a headphones charger and cables everywhere with different connectors and stuff. Well, this is a thing of the past. So step one is to get the right charging situation in place. And this is why this segment of the video is sponsored by Anchor. Because their devices are the best way to transition to USB-C. Gone are the days of gigantic laptop chargers and your phone has to have a separate one. For example, this is the Anchor Nano 30 watts. 
It's so small that you can carry it in your pocket. And it can charge your phone, your headphones, all kinds of devices, and even some laptops. And step two is, of course, to make everything work with USB-C. One way, of course, is to replace your old tech with new stuff that is USB-C. But if you have something older and you just don't want to upgrade just for the USB-C, you can just get cable attachments like this one that stay attached to your cable. And you can do all sorts of crazy charging combination because everything just works. For example, Anker has this 10,000 mAh power bank that's super small. It's ideal for travel. It goes up to 30 watts and it can fully charge a phone two to three times over. And there's also a smaller 5,000 mAh version. And with this, you can solve your travel charging nightmares. And now there's no excuse even for iPhone users. So to learn more about Anchor's ecosystem of products, you can follow the link in the description. So for our next one, you'll need a bit of time, but I promise you it's gonna be worth it. And this is doing a photo day. I had my photo day in 2016 and it was smooth sailing ever since. So let me tell you what it is. Today we take enormous amount of photos and videos daily with our phones. And these tend to be scattered all around the place, maybe in some all the phone that you have in your drawer or in some computer that you have somewhere, SSDs, hard drives, and sometimes these photos go back to 10 or 15 years ago. So what I want you to do is pick a day, pick an afternoon, maybe it's raining outside, and just take some hours to organize your photos and put them all into one place and then upload them to the cloud. Now, Google Photos is an option, Apple Photos is an option, there's also Amazon, I don't care what you choose, but just put all your photos into the cloud and make sure that you turn on automatic backups, which means that if you take a photo, whenever you come home and you have Wi-Fi again, it gets automatically sent to the cloud. And it might seem like a daunting task to upload all this stuff from all the different places, but there's another hidden benefit of this. Today I have basically every photo I've ever taken since 2009, save on Google Photos. And this is not only convenient, but it also helps build some fun and happy moments with your friends. Because most of these services will remind you of that concert you went to five years ago, or some of the photos you took on these specific days seven years ago. This is, for example, one notification that I never got rid of. The next thing is get a note capturing system. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You either have one huge note that is super long, it has a bunch of things in it, nothing is organized, or you tried some complicated system using Notion or Obsidian and whatever, 700 different apps, and then you end up not using it because it's just too complicated. It takes too much time to even write a single note. The way to solve this is simple, and this is how I would recommend for anyone to set up their notes system, which is first to capture the notes, which means making sure that you can capture a note in the simplest, shortest amount of time. This basically goes in your inbox of notes. For this, I use TickTick both on my phone and on my desktop. I just have a keyboard shortcut on my Mac, I can type stuff, press enter, and that's done. On my phone, I have a widget on my home screen, so one tap and I'm typing already. And a good test is that, say that you are on a biking trip and you're biking around and you wanna, you have some idea, you have some thoughts, you wanna note that down, you can do that very easily without fumbling around too much. And then what you do is once a day or once every two days, you just look at your notes and you organize them into your system of choice. And so I take my inbox and and I just put stuff where it belongs. If I have any random links or tweets, I save them into Raindrop. For videos idea, I also have a board on Notion where I can tag videos and put them in the multiple columns. Now the next one is pretty weird and also pretty scary for many people, but it's something that I found extremely satisfying to do, which is leaving your house without a phone. So for me, it's when I'm going out with friends, I may leave my phone in the car, or when I know I'm going to a dinner that is close by, I just leave my phone at home. Now, this seems scary, I know, and it will be weird. Today seems completely inconceivable. What if there is an emergency? What do I do? Well, billions of people before the year 2000 were doing just that every day and they were fine for the most part. And what it helped me is that not only during the time I don't have my phone, I'm more focused and present on the moment, but leaving your house without your phone makes you realize what are the real positives and the benefits that technology brings to our lives. The next thing is using ChatGPT in the right way. Now, most of you already maybe tried ChatGPT or they're using it to some things. When you find yourself doing some manual tasks, like you may need to do some weird editing of some tables in Excel, try putting that into ChatGPT and ask it to do that operation. You'll be surprised by how many use cases I found where ChatGPT could save a massive amount of time. And I'm gonna tell you another smart hack. So the ChatGPT that you can use for free is based on a model 3.5, which is good, but not the best. The GPT-4 model, which is way more powerful and yields way better results, it's paid, it's 20 bucks a month. So if you're not sure whether that 
that's worth it for you, what you can do is sign up to the OpenAI API, which you'll find the link of in the description, generate a key and throw that key into something like ChatKit, which is the front end that I use to mess with ChatGPT. This means that you now have access to GPT-4, the most powerful model, and based on my usage, which is pretty normal, average throughout the week, I end up spending two or three dollars a month of ChatGPT. The next one is again going on a witch hunt, but for emails. Now, most productivity gurus will tell you you need to get to inbox zero and have everything cleaned up. Well, for me, I haven't been able to do it on my personal email. It's the email that I've been using for 15 years. It's there's too much stuff in there. So what I do instead is anytime a new email comes in, I do the same thing I do for notifications. I stop and I question it. Is this newsletter useful? Is this update useful? If it's not, I immediately go and unsubscribe to that alert. And over time, over the next one, two, three months, you'll find that now your email is a place where just the important stuff appears. And now for the last one, let's go for a round of bonus tips for every single platform. If you're on Windows, you can hit Windows V instead of Control V, not only to paste things, but to enable clipboard history, which means that you can keep saved up all the things that you've copied in the past and you can paste them immediately with one click. If you have Android, there's a way to make your phone feel way faster without actually upgrading your phone. Go to your software info, hit your build number seven times and you will enable the developer options. Now go into settings, developer options and scroll down until you find these animation scaling options and turn all three to 0.5x. And now your phone will feel super snappy. Just trust me, it works. If you're on a Mac, you can take professional looking screenshots of elements in your page by hitting Shift Command 4 and this will generate beautiful screenshots with this nice shadow around it. And finally, if you're on an iPhone, consider subscribing to my channel. And here's another video that you might enjoy.